How does the community respond from a significant event? Here at the Hindu Samaj these many years ago, the fire that transformed not only the Samaj but the city of Hamilton. How does the community move forward? What are the lessons that we can learn? Join me now as we hear from a variety of community voices as we look back, not only at the Samaj, but as our city as a whole and our future. As the current president of this beautiful Samaj, knowing what occurred in 915, how is the community coping now? Uh, I think we are coping very good right now. Uh, we went through some rough time uh, that time when we didn't have the temple, uh, no place of worship, uh, and we were lucky enough that there were a couple of churches uh, who offered us their space to do our services. and. Uh, uh, that was very helpful and since then we've grown and then it took us a long time to raise some funds uh, and make you know make this building to what it is today still needs a lot of improvements but uh, any building you know yeah. takes time so and even the younger generation I was at the time in like you know uh, I would say a younger older person at the time uh, with uh, Mr. Pasi as the president and I was the secretary. And uh, as, as he said, uh, I came right away when I found out and the first morning the temple was burning. Yes. But since then, uh, as you asked me this, uh, how, how it has progressed, um, our, uh, it, it, and in fact, as I said, this place has become famous now because famous in the sense that, uh, uh, popular in the, as well, I would say. Yes because of what happened to the place and, and, and the history to it. Yeah. If we learn to know the other's pain, hate crime can be rooted out and we can promote amity. Hindu faith reposes on two cardinal virtues, nonviolence and truth, which assure the preservation and fostering of human goods. Hamilton City has rightfully declared Hindu Samaj as a historic site since 915 fire of Hindu temple has served to lay the foundation for a principle of inclusive universality of all faith groups in Hamilton, which the future generation should cherish and foster. I remember getting that call in the wee hours of 9 of September 15th, that Saturday morning, and uh, racing out of bed uh, over to the, um, to the site. And from that point on, I realized that we still had lots of work to do in our community so that every single member of our ethnocultural, multicultural community of Hamilton, of whatever race or religion background, need to, need to have felt uh, being an equal member, an equal part, having equity across the board in terms of their contribution and why they chose Hamilton as their adopted new home and to ensure they were welcomed permanently. And I remember meeting with the leaders of the uh, Samaj Temple thereafter, staying in touch with them on a regular basis as part of their restoration project of the temple and mostly through Dr. Mani Subramanian. And I remember just uh, sharing about, of course, my own family uh, of our Armenian background and how my parents came to this country and how my own father had to change his last name because of discrimination. His name was really Misak Tumajan and became Ernie Jackson in order to try to assimilate back then and to survive. So I shared with him <clears throat> how discrimination has unfortunately been amongst us, maybe back then more overt, but today obviously with the temple burning, a sad tragic part of the overt nature of discrimination still occurring in our community, but maybe even more so beyond the temple, 
of more covert type of discrimination that we have to deal with? Well, I think when one reflects on our community, uh, from the university's point of view, I see it as a series of concentric circles. So we have a university community here with its particular challenges and issues and strengths within the broader Hamilton community with its particular issues, strengths and, and virtues. And then of course the circles just radiate out from that uh, to encompass uh, the rest of our country and so on. And the thing that always strikes me as a university administrator is that although one talks about the, the cloister of the university, the ivory tower of the university, it isn't that. Uh, it's in no way separable from what goes on in the world outside. So uh, there is a great deal of violence, unhappiness, and blind prejudice at work in the world. And uh, sooner or later, it will register here in some form or another. Um, similarly in our city. So uh, all the citizens of Hamilton work uh, uh, together to make this a great, warm, and inclusive community. But there is always that challenge from the outside because we're all linked to currents, political and otherwise geopolitical uh, currents outside of our immediate community, which means that there's always friction being imported. Uh, there are always judgments uh, being, being imported into the, the micro community, as it were. I am a powerful lover of universities and what they stand for, but I'm not blind to the fact that universities educational institutions of all kind, because they're in the business of social formation and cultural formation, uh, need to be better than society at large in being sensitive about issues of discrimination uh, or um, any other form of kind of uh, racial discrimination, religious discrimination. Well, I came to Hamilton about 10 years ago now. So in the wake of the events of 2001 and a, and I've seen considerable change in the city since that time um, and I remember coming just after the uh, bombing of the uh, Samaj and uh, and you know being concerned about you know the context of that event out of you know the circumstances out of which it happened and uh, I think we're fortunate here in Canada in general that we just sort of don't think those things happen here and yet uh, from that event 15 years ago to the recent arson at the uh, at the mosque in Peterborough which is where we moved from when we came to Hamilton um, you know it concerns me that we haven't gone that far during that period of time and I think on some levels we've made huge strides I think there's a deep willingness uh, to make things better, but I think society in general moves slowly. So I think for every great step forward we make, unfortunately, there's often a number of little steps backwards that we need to uh, compensate for. And I, and I consider myself very fortunate that I tend to live and function in a community which is concerned about taking those steps forwards and is concerned about positive social change. Um, you know, the Jewish community here in Hamilton takes great pride in its history and its roots here in Hamilton. I have my own family roots here. Um, you know, this is home. This is a community they've worked hard to build and they want to see it as a, as a wonderful and a peaceful and a productive and a progressive community in which to raise the next generations. Um, but I think when we look at the larger context, you know, where the world's gone in the last 15 years, we look today and in some respects the world's in a messier place than it was 15 years ago. Every single year people seem to say, I hope it's going to get better, and yet it seems on many levels to get worse and worse. And, and I don't think we are completely insulated locally from what's going on globally. September 15th of 2001 was much more than the burning of the temple. I have learned much in the community and from the community about the injury that took place. But what's more important than that initial burning was how the community came together and stood together shoulder to shoulder. And what it really demonstrated in our community was resilience and the ability of people to come together in support of each other, disregarding the diversity of our city, 
but looking at what took place. And the rallying cry became, uh, attack against one is an attack against all. And it really pulled the community together. So where we are today is we have done many, many important uh, outreach initiatives in the community, working with people like Dr. Submaranian and Nithi Anand, and working at reaching into the community. I personally have been able to attend many of the events at the Samaj. Uh, I have been there to witness the beauty of the new facility, but also the beauty of the community and how we've been able to continue the dialogue. Therein lies our challenge is to continue the discussion on some of these very difficult issues, diversity in our community, human rights, but making sure that we are all at the table. And what we have really learned from the events of 2001 is how the community needs to come together and stand in support, particularly at difficult times, but most important at times when nothing is going on so that we build those relationships and that's what we in the Hamilton Police Service over the last six years have focused on is building those relationships of trust, relationships of respect, and how we reach out to each other to find the way forward. On September 11th, 2001, I actually was hired as a social planner at the Social Planning and Research Council of Hamilton. And so, again, I'm always struck by events in our world that are, uh, of course, tragic and, and, and bring great sorrow and death, and they happen simultaneously with things that bring joy and other feelings of goodness. And, uh, and that was that situation for me and starting at the Social Planning Council at that time, I remember 15 years ago, the projects that I was involved in and included numerous uh, ethno-racialized communities coming forward wanting assistance to organize, to find ways that they could come together and do their cultural uh, experiences together and, and there was a, a, a need for everyone to have their very distinct voices heard and and that's still an important that's still an important part of the journey today but I would say that there is a greater where we have moved in in good ways is that there's a greater understanding in each of those individual communities as to why all the other individuals communities individual communities are asking the same question and so um, in in other words that it isn't about um, it isn't about finding individual space to go off and do our thing um, alone, like it like it once was. Um, there is more of a sense of um, yes, we want to do our own dance, and you're welcome to come and dance with us. Um, and I understand why you want to have your own um, talk about what's impacting your community, and then. Sometimes let's do that together and share that. And so I think that we've moved ahead in, in terms of um, uh, collaborating more across community, which is um, a really important marker of a, of a journey toward equity and inclusion, that um, we have to be intentional about addressing um, issues um, like in the LGBTQ community. We have to say, um, yes, this is a time where we need to be specific about LGBTQ people and when the trans community is going to be asked questions about their realities, they want to do that in isolation because they feel some safety there, but they recognize that there is a greater community that they are part of and it needs to be both and in our journey toward equity and inclusion. It needs to be, and I think that's the beauty of Canada in general and Hamilton certainly embracing that, um, you know, not a melting pot but a sense that, yes, we embrace and acknowledge an intentionality about knowing who we are and what we need as a community, and we do that in the context of the larger community so that there can be um, uh, assistance and synergies shared across those boundaries. And I think that's what will make a community the, the most positive space for all people to, to thrive. And um, yeah, that's where we need to go. And this was just shortly after 9-11, so I mean, you know, bigotry has no space and, and they can't even figure out which is our 
you know, it's not that I would want them to destroy our mosque or anything, but they can't even differentiate between one faith to another faith. So they burned down that Hindu temple, and since then, you know, we were lucky we had Mayor Wade here at the city of Hamilton, and Mayor Wade was instrumental in set, uh, setting up uh, a Strengthening Hamilton's Community Initiative. That initiative went an incredible, incredible way to making the um, city of Hamilton a much better place to be in. Diversity means everything. This is how our new nation is. This is how our new city is going to be. This is how our country is. This is how the world is becoming. Diversity is, is probably the, it's not a, a terrifying word. It's actually a, an incredibly good word. Well, as the hate crime officer, one of my roles was to educate our officers about hate crime. And one of the important things that I used to emphasize was that world events impacted directly to what goes on in our own community. When the fire happened at the Samaj Temple, it really brought that home uh, to all our officers because they saw the direct impact of 9-11 to the fire in Hamilton a couple weeks later. And uh, that lesson really became a reality. And at the time, as a police service, as a community, I don't think we were as climatized to the fact that world events impacted directly to our own community. But uh, we have become more uh, aware of that now and we saw after the Paris attacks recently that there was six uh, attacks against the Muslim community in Ontario almost immediately. Police services have become more prepared and aware of that uh, reality unfortunately. The uh, second uh, important lesson that I uh, tried to emphasize to our officers was that uh, there are certain communities which are traditionally targeted uh, uh, are more vulnerable uh, for hate crime and that is of course the black community, the Jewish community and the LGBTQ community. However, we do see shifts and changes in uh, uh, communities which are targeted. Right now we're seeing an increase in crimes against the Muslim community but we're seeing a decrease in crimes against the Jewish community. Uh, police services uh, have to be very, very prepared for hate crimes because of the impact on the entire community as opposed on a singular victim. And uh, failure to do so could really, really be destructive to the fabric of the community. The other thing is, is that uh, it was important to remember from the Samaj Temple uh, fire, the lesson that was learned was that, yes, it was a devastating uh, event as was the 9-11 attacks in New York, but both in New York and in Hamilton we have seen uh, growth in the communities in terms of understanding diversity, accepting diversity and working together and uh, that is the, probably the uh, most important thing to, to come out of the entire incident. The arrests which occurred 12 years after the fire were almost anticlimactic to uh, what has occurred in the community with uh, our uh, uh, emphasis on working together and uh, accepting of the diversity within the community. I remember well, of course, 9-11. It's etched in all of our memories of such a dramatic uh, moment of, of really global madness where these airplanes that were to transport innocent people to destinations to see their loved ones or to maybe uh, go to jobs and so on smashed into these iconic buildings in New York City. And I was at a meeting at City Hall at the time when we saw this happen and the first one we thought was simply an accident. And then the second one hit and we knew that something was amiss. And of course, it reverberated right across the globe, but little did I know, even on that morning when it impacted so, us so much, that really our community would feel the reverberation as much as it did. Because as you say, four days later, uh, the Hindu Samaj temple, a place of worship, a holy place, was set on fire. Assuming in retaliation for the 9-11 uh, the, uh, attacks in New York City, how misguided is that? Violence in reaction to violence. Not only did the individuals get the wrong religion uh, and the wrong racial group, but they didn't think through in their madness um, that they were contributing to the intolerance rather than easing it. Regardless of race, religion, ethnicity, uh, we are all part of this community. We, have a responsibility to make it grow and make it prosper. And so these many years later, now 15 years later, where are we? Well, you know what, we are, we've made some progress, but we are one bad incident away from regressing. And as we look at the global picture with the violence that's occurring worldwide, 
where religious groups are being targeted, even today. Thankfully, not in our community, but in other communities where we see an influx of refugees targeted because of their racial and ethnic backgrounds, um, that we are reminded that, that, you know, this piece is fragile. Are we perfect yet? No. But do we have a lot to be proud with? Um, I do believe that we've come a long way. Uh, we have resource documents, we have uh, done statistics, we have worked with groups. We've reached out to groups where there's been uh, individual difficulties and problems. And uh, I feel honored to have been asked to participate in many of these um, uh, outreach activities. Um, I see a lot of very, very good things and still good things happening in our city. Uh, I believe it is a journey and I believe it is an evolution. Uh, one of the things that I really like about how that event was handled was the interfaith community response and that people were not looking to uh, blame each other. They were looking at how do we make this better as a collective given the heinous nature of the crime that happened. And that tone has stayed, uh, the cooperative nature. And I know from some of my other um, work with other communities and watching across Canada, it's not always the case in terms of how people work together, but we came together in concert, uh, we continue to work in concert, and as issues arise, whether it's this issue, you know, obviously in arson at the Samaj, or other issues, people are still willing to come together and work cooperatively. And quite frankly, you can't buy that. It has tremendous effect, but for me, the most important thing is it sets the example of if you've got a controversial issue, how do you come together to resolve it and work through it? As opposed to uh, being divisive, it's become something that has been uh, collaborative and that's really important. We like to pride ourselves and think that we're changing and evolving and become more liberal and understanding of people, but we haven't. I started noticing the little things. I stopped putting this wall of ignorance where I just ignored every time somebody gave me a strange look, every time somebody would not smile back, every time somebody would not sit beside me on the bus when it was completely full, right, and I had an empty seat and nobody would sit beside me, every time people would hold their children closer when they would walk past me. I started noticing the little things that I had previously ignored and pretended like they weren't there. Because it's no longer in your face and direct, it's more indirect. It's more the way people look at you. It's more what people say when they go home rather than what they say to your face. It's become systemic and it's a problem. And I truly believe that it's a problem. And it's unfair because there's nothing different about me other than the color of my skin or the fact that I wrap a scarf, a piece of cloth around my head. That's what scares you is the fact that I decide to cover my hair and it angers me and it makes me feel less than and I would and it makes me feel like I have to work harder than somebody else. I'm a relative newcomer to Hamilton. I've only been in the city now for just less than two years, but it's been an interesting journey in talking to uh, alumni and uh, college staff and faculty and the community about, uh, for example, our international program and what we're trying to do there to create a more welcoming community to make Hamilton more welcoming for people that are coming in from outside the city, outside the province, outside the country. I was um, I was a little surprised uh, in the early days when uh, I started to talk to people about what we're trying to do to uh, grow our international student base and how we thought that was a good thing for our domestic students to have more experiences, to be less insular, to be more connected to a global world. And I was actually uh, advised by a couple people to to not go there, to just focus on our domestic students, to remember that this is really about you know, people that uh, are born and raised in Hamilton. And that surprised me. 
It surprised me because we are we are all immigrants to this country. I've um, I've really been blessed in my life to be able to travel to many many countries. In fact, over seventy countries and, and to all of the all seven continents. And it's been amazing to me that as I've talked to different people in different cultures, uh, what I've seen is that we are way more alike than we are different. Um, whether I talk to mothers in, in rural Zambia or rural China or in Australia or in Bolivia, they all want exactly the same thing for their children. They want their children to be happy, they want their children to be uh, healthy, and they want their children to get a great education so they have opportunities in life. We're really the same, and yet uh, I think uh, too many times we're fearful of that which we do not know. And um, I think part of the journey that we have to be on is we have to get to know people that come from different cultures, different races, different backgrounds, different lived experiences. And as part of that journey, then, I think we start to understand that we are more alike than different. Somebody said to me once, and I think it's very true, that, um, that beliefs don't drive actions. Actions create beliefs. Uh, and the more you practice something, even if it's just reaching out and talking to people and getting to know them, the more you will believe good things about the value that they bring as an individual. So what I've seen here in Hamilton is, uh, yes, there is more diversity, which is good, uh, but diversity comes also with so many differences that we have to contain. And if we're not able to contain those diversities or those differences, then it's hard to manage. As a community leader or as community leaders, we have a responsibility because it's the parents, it's the community leaders that will have to transmit those values that we want in our kids. So I'm thinking, the youth is probably the answer to becoming more inclusive and more understanding of the issues um, that we're facing today, either in Hamilton or everywhere else. So we have to come together, and it doesn't look like we have already come together that strong, so we need to work more on getting together, knowing each other more, and educating ourselves about our differences so that our differences become more a unifying thing than something that will divide us. We still have a long way to go. We were all very distressed, not just about the torching of the, uh, the, the temple, but also the damage that was done to, uh, done to a mosque. I just couldn't believe it happening in Hamilton. I'd been all around in, in the year and a half, I guess, that I had been in office visiting uh, any number of, of churches and so on and uh, I just couldn't see anyone stooping that low to be quite truthful. It, it took some thinking to bring myself to the point where okay this happened, it's real, let's get at it. We needed, we needed businesses to come on side, we needed the media to come on side. Uh, the Spectator was a, was a major player, uh, CH uh, did a great job for us. And, and so many other organizations, you, you just had, you had to be there to realize how people wanted to move away from the taint that was left by the, uh, by the uh, bombing and the firing and the burning and, and the damage to the, to the uh, facilities. It was, it was just not good. Now, four days after 9-11, a seminal event occurred here in Missouri City, the burning of the Hindu Samaj. Yes. Upon reflection, what lessons can we learn or have we learned as an organization through the process of the arrest and what occurred all, all these many years? What have we learned? Well, I think there's, there's a couple of very important messages here, and, and one from the service to our community and one from the community that we have learned as a police agency. So the most important thing from my perspective is that every citizen in Hamilton and, and sadly the the, um, the folks that belong to the Hindu Samaj temple learned was that we will never stop investigating offenses and we are always victim-based. 
that when there are victims of crime and circumstance, the Hamilton Police Service will continually to investigate, to continually follow the evidence, continue to look after our victims of crime. And this resulted in those individuals responsible for the burning of this Hindu Samaj temple um, being brought before the courts um, with our continuation of relentlessly pursuing those persons responsible and that justice would then be, be handled by the courts. What we learned as a service was, and, and I can't say it better than, than Crystal Tandon said um, in the newspaper article shortly after the, the court date, and, and she said, uh, and I quote, we stand on the moral ground of reconciliation over retaliation in accordance with the teachings of our religion. We are interested in educating each person involved in the crime to turn a new leaf by serving the community or the church. This is a very powerful statement, and it's a very powerful statement in my mind because it, it is focused on forgiveness and understanding. And yes, this was horrendous offenses targeted at many, but this is a community that was deeply affected, deeply hurt during a time shortly after 9-11. And it's not about retaliation. It's about learning, it's about understanding, it's about forgiveness. And I think as a police service, we must accept that message and learn from that message and move forward with an opportunity to not just one message, but there are many messages out there that we can learn from. And we need to, to tap into our communities and learn from them to make us a better service. You know, I, I, said, I, think, I think this topic is uh, very timely because last week I had the good fortune of attending some YMCA meetings in North Carolina with 60 of the largest YMCA's in North America and of course in that state they're having a lot of discussion around rights and equality particularly as it relates to the LGBTQ community. And uh, through that dialogue, many of my colleagues looked to us north in Canada and said, so what's happening up in Canada? Are you dealing with these type of issues? And on the one hand, I had the good fortune of saying, you know, largely no. Uh, ever since 1982, when we repatriated the Constitution and our Charter of Rights and Freedoms were, was enacted, we've been on a journey uh, of equality uh, across the country. And, and most recently in Ontario, in 2012, the on revisions to the Ontario Human Rights Code has really, I think, taken us a large way along that journey. But as I reflected, I realized that journey is not over. We are on a journey and while we have made some headway, more work remains. And as I think about 9-11 and the last 15 years and what has transpired, the good news is there's been a lot of great work. We've got the Hamilton Immigration Partnership Council. We've got organizations stepping forward. I think there's greater awareness within the community of the value of immigration. Quite frankly, the value of immigration, not just in Hamilton and our economy depending on it, but our country and welcoming newcomers to our community. I think the spectator has played a, a, an important role on educating and making uh, uh, our citizens aware of the importance of social cause and social impact. But despite all that, I must say I'm troubled by uh, when I go online and read some of the uh, posts and blogs that exist, when I see what people are writing, particularly when it's uh, under the guise of anonymity. and if one assumes that at least some of this material is edited and not all posted on the web, then it troubles me when I think about where certain individuals, and I assume and hope it is a minority, but where some of the thinking is when it comes to diversity and inclusion. And when I think about that, it reminds me of the work and the job we have ahead of us. And while it is nice to reflect back and say we've made some headway, that journey isn't over. And in, in my mind, that work has just begun and we can't take our eye off the ball. We can't become complacent. We can't look south of the border and think we are, we have the answers or we are further ahead. We're on a journey in the same way many communities around our country and around the world are on a journey. And if we take our eye off that ball and that goal of real, true 
embracing of diversity and celebrating diversity and inclusion, if we ever lose sight of that, then I think uh, we've, we've lost. Um, I will go back a little bit to uh, what I felt when when the temple was burnt down. Um, I have to say that it has been maybe three years when I came to Canada. And as you know, I came from a war-torn country. So I was happy thinking I'm in this safe country. I, I have arrived in Canada, all is gold and heavens and so forth. And then all of a sudden, there is a hate crime. I was shocked. I was shocked and I realized that uh, it doesn't matter where you are, the, the safety is compromised. So at that point I started opening my eyes and thinking, okay, maybe it's not as gold as I thought. So uh, it was shocking that way, but um, I have to say that we have come from a long way. As a city in general, I think we have improved a lot. And the city is more diverse as it was at that point, and I think there's more level of acceptancy. Obviously, we are far away from, uh, we live in harmony, but uh, sometimes I, 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 I wonder how superficial that could be. It's just a level of acceptancy, it's tolerance, it's really a full integration. So I still question myself. But when it comes to hate crime, racism, or any other isms, <laughs> uh, I see it in, 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 in two folds. One is a systemic issue. The second is just general public population perceptions. Uh, when we, we go to uh, systemic issues, I think we have a lot of work to do in terms of uh, maybe putting more uh, legislations and strong laws against any hate crime. Um, we, we do well in public, but it's questionable to know what happens behind the walls. Uh, sometimes, um, of course, 15 years ago, things have evolved. Uh, in Hamilton, we have become a hub where uh, most of immigration from uh, all over the world uh, are coming through the border and they ended up in Hamilton, uh, where uh, people are moving away from Toronto and come to Hamilton. So we have evolved. We, 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 grew, we grew as a community um, and diversity is clear, apparent. Um, and then the level of acceptance has really improved. But we still have uh, some work to do. So I, I believe that the question of inclusion and how do we welcome uh, people to contribute from across the spectrum is, is the continuing challenge of our age. And uh, we were summoned to respond post 9-11. And I think the community d did what it's always done, which is collectively, collectively to express outrage and concern at, at uh, some dev devastating acts of intolerance and to pull together. Um, so that's the good news. I think there is a level of honesty in our discourse that probably wasn't there before that. I think there are stronger relationships in part in, in different parts of our diverse leadership. Um, but I remain concerned and I'm concerned for a whole host of reasons, not the least of which is um, some of the commentary that I hear in coffee shops and on social media about uh, Syrian refugees and an intolerance and unwillingness to accept our share of responsibility to welcome those most recent newcomers to our community. Uh, I was alarmed during the federal election campaign by the intentional divisiveness and hate of the NACAB issue. Uh, we only have to look across the border to look at, at uh, the American political campaign unfolding as we speak to understand that division and fear, especially in times of economic uncertainty, uncertainty will always play to a certain constituency. And I think we have to be vigilant about that. Uh, we have to speak honestly to one another about what our fears and concerns and resentments are. And we have to figure out a way 
um, to make sure that that uh, that we can build a place that that welcomes and embraces people from all parts of the world and from all parts of this community. And I would suggest that we're on a journey that has on balance been positive, but there have been ups and downs, and there are bumps for sure along the way and in the path ahead. In my role uh, at The Spectator and also in the work that I do in community development with organizations such as the Hamilton Roundtable for Poverty Reduction, I see and hear and think a lot about the manifestations uh, of diversity and tolerance and inclusivity. Um, and my, my um, natural inclination is to be optimistic, uh, and I am determinedly optimistic, but I probably am not as sunny about it as a lot of people are because of some of the things that I see and that I hear. Um, the reality is that with, these, with the, the times that we've been going through, um, both with the introduction of, for example, Syrian refugees into Hamilton and the, uh, and the ongoing uh, influx of immigrants and refugees in the community and it's kind of tied to a little bit to world events the sad truth is that the in some ways intolerance the lack of tolerance the lack of willing to be inclusive uh, is willingness to be inclusive is, is actually getting worse in my view at this point but that's a particular point uh, I'm optimistic that it will get better over time but I think one of the things that we need more of in Hamilton is Kind of a grassroots effort at spreading the news and the information and the reasons about why it's really important for us to be welcoming to become be the most welcoming community that we that we possibly can be right now um, there is a fair degree I, I believe a lot of it is what i would call xenophobia because it's fear-based uh, and i think um, I, I have more tolerance for xenophobia than i do for outright uh, racism because it's, xenophobia is based on ignorance and that's where I think the optimism comes in. Um, people who are afraid of something that they don't know or don't understand can learn that they don't need to be afraid. People who have entrenched intolerant views, hopefully you'd like to think they can change but often I, I fear maybe they can't. Our challenge I think is to take the story of inclusion, the story of being a welcoming community and taking it to the percentage of the population that may be ignorant or may not be fully aware uh, and may hold intolerant views based on that because they really don't understand. That is fixable and that's the good news and that's, that's the news that organizations such as mine, the Hamilton Spectator and also community development organizations like the Roundtable and many others can actually use that. Th there's a great story to be told here. Uh, it's not a story that people need to be afraid of. It's a story that people need to understand. And I think if there's anything that we need to do more of, it's take that story to the people, if you'll pardon the, the expression. And by that I mean taking it to the people through where they gather in things like uh, service clubs and churches, um, where you find, you find this kind of attitude. Um, a lot of it is based on people feeling a little bit overwhelmed. They don't know exactly what's going on. They see, some, they see things are changing and they don't feel like they're in, they don't feel like they're part of it enough, they feel like they're outside looking in, and I think that leads to the potential for misunderstanding, the potential for hearing the wrong message. And that's something else that we need to be very conscious of is the fact that if we don't tell the right story, there are people who will tell the wrong story.
The work to create and foster a hate-free society requires every single member of the human family. I am confident that together we will make this happen, playing an active role to reduce racism, discrimination, homophobia, anti-Semitism, bias, and hatred in any and all of its forms. Together we can make this happen.